Hi everybody, welcome to GT Coding. In this tutorial series, we are creating this website using Next.js. Now in the previous video, we created the API of our application. So we are getting all the data from these API routes. Now let's go ahead and connect the API to our front end. So let's get started. Right now, the first thing we will do is we will display all the categories in our homepage. Now here we can see that we have these categories displayed over here, but it is not from this database. So in the database, we have technology, tips and tricks, AI, web dev and programming. And we need to display that over here. But these categories are being fetched from our data.js file, which we used just for testing. So here we have the categories. Right now, let's go ahead and fetch the categories from the database. So for that, let's go to this component, which displays this categories list. So here we have this component called categories list. Right now here, instead of getting the categories data from this at data, let's delete it. And let's get the categories from the database. So for that, let's go ahead and uh, type const and uh, we are naming it categories data. I'll just rename it to categories. And here let's tap const categories and let's set it equal to await and let's create a function called get categories. And since we are using await, we need to change this function into an async function. Right now, let's go ahead and create this get categories function. So here let's tap const get categories and it is going to be an async function. And here let's add a try catch block. And here in the try, let's tap const and let's call it res equals await. And for the categories, we have this API route, which is API categories. So we need to hit this API route. So let's type fetch and here we need to add the API route. So let's copy this and let's paste it over here. Now let's go ahead and change this homepage URL to an environment variable so that when we deploy this application, we just need to change the environment variable and the code will work all right. So let's go to the env file. And now here we can see that we already have this next auth URL. So we can use this. If you don't have the next auth URL, you can go ahead and create your own environment variable, but I'll just use this next auth URL. So let's go back and uh, here, instead of localhost 3001, let's type dollar symbol curly braces and here let's type process dot env dot next auth URL. Right now let's go ahead and see if the result is okay. So let's type if res dot okay. Then let's go ahead and type const and let's call it categories equals await res dot json and let's go ahead and return categories and here in the catch let's go ahead and console dot log the error and uh, here let's type return null or now if you scroll down here we can see that for the category we have this error and it says that it has a type of any so let's go ahead and create a type for the categories right now let's go ahead and go to our application and let's create a new folder and let's call it types and here we will add all the types. So let's create a new file called index.ts and let's create a type for the category. So let's tap export type and let's call it T category. And for the category, we need to have an ID and it is going to be a string. And we'll also have the cat name for the category name. And it is also a string. Right now, let's go ahead and get this type over here. So I'll just import T category from at app types. And here for the return type, let's go ahead and type promise and T category and it will be an array or null. Right now, let's go ahead and add this return null over here at the bottom. Right now, we can see we have these errors. So in the category, we have cat name, not name. So let's go ahead and change this to cat name. And here also, let's change this to cat name. And now this should work. So let's go back to our website. And let's go to the home page. And now here we can see all the categories are being displayed over here. And if I click on this category, we can see that we are taken to that page categories technology. So everything is working all right. All right now, the next thing we will do is we will connect the UI of the create post page to the API. So let's go ahead and log in. So let's log in with Google. And now we can see we are logged in. So let's click on create new. And this is the create post page. Now let's go ahead and connect this UI to our API. 
So when we click on create post, this data should be stored to our database. Now before doing that, let's go ahead and uh, go to the API route. So here we can see for posts, we have this API route. And this is the route for adding the data. Now here before executing all this code, let's go ahead and check whether the user is authenticated. So for that, we will use get server session from next auth. So let's go ahead and import get server session from next auth next. And we also need to import auth options. So let's tap import auth options from this route. Right now, let's go ahead and type const session equals await get server session auth options. And now let's add an if condition and uh, let's check whether we have a session. So let's type if exclamation session. So if you don't have a session, then we'll just go ahead and return next response dot JSON. And uh, here let's set the error to not authenticated. And let's also send a status code of 401. Right now we need to do the same for the edit and the delete routes. So let's copy this and uh, let's go to this route right here. And here we have the edit route. So let's add the code over here. So I'll just paste it over here and let's get server session and auth options. So just type import get server session from next auth next and import auth options from this route. And let's scroll down and uh, let's do the same for the delete method. So let's paste it over here. Right now, let's go ahead and write the functionality of this create post page. So for the create post page, we can see that we are using this component called create post form. So let's go to that. And here we can see that we have these input fields. So we need to get the data from these input fields and we need to store it somewhere. So let's create states for that. So let's tap const title set title equals use state and by default the title will be empty and let's go ahead and duplicate this a couple more times and for the second one let's change this to set content and for the third one let's change this to categories and uh, for this one let's change this to selected category and uh, for the next one let's change this to image URL and then lastly we have public ID. Right now this category state is for this drop down. So this will basically be an array of categories. So here for the type let's set it to T category and let's import it from app types and it will be an array. So let's add square brackets over here and here in this default value let's set it to an empty array. And lastly, let's go ahead and also add the error. So let's type error over here. Right now, the next thing we will do is we will fetch all the categories and store it inside this categories state. So for that, we will use use effect. So let's type use effect and let's import it from react. And uh, here, let's create an arrow function. And for the second argument, I'll just leave it an empty array. So it will run the first time the page loads. So let's create a function called fetch all categories and it will be an async function. And here let's type const res equals await fetch. And uh, since this is a client component, we can directly type the relative path. So let's type API forward slash categories. And uh, now let's go ahead and store it as cat names equals await res.json. So this will get all the categories and store it inside cat names. And let's go ahead and set this state to this cat names. So let's type set categories and let's set it to cat names. And now let's go ahead and call the function over here. So let's type fetch all categories. Right now let's scroll down and uh, here we have the categories data. So we have the state called categories. So let's change the name to categories. And here instead of name, we have to change this to cat name. Right now, let's go back to our website and let's reload this page. And now we can see that all the categories are displayed over here. Now, the next thing we will do is whenever we make any changes to these input fields, we need to add the values to these states. So title and content. 
So let's go ahead and do that. Here for the first input field, let's add an on change. And here let's tap E and let's set it to set title. And let's set it to e.target.value. And let's do the same for the text area. So here let's tap on change E set content e.target.value. And the next thing is the links. So we have already added the functionality of the links over here. So here we can see that we are adding the links. And then the next thing is the categories. So here we have the categories. So here for the select, let's go ahead and add an own change. And let's tap E, set selected category. And let's set it to e.target.value. So now whenever we change the value of this drop down, they should set the selected category state over here. And then let's go ahead and uh, here we have the error message. Now we will display the error message only if we have an error. So let's add this inside curly braces. And uh, here let's type error because we have the state called error ampersand ampersand. And here we'll add the div. And here instead of typing error message, let's add the actual error message over here. So let's type error. Right now let's go ahead and create a function to handle the form submit. So here for the form, let's add an own submit. And here let's call a function called handle submit. And now let's create this function. So let's tap const handle submit. And here we will get a variable and let's give it a type of react dot form event. And here let's tap e dot prevent default to prevent the default behavior, which is reloading the page. Right now let's go ahead and uh, check if we don't have the title and the content. So let's tap if exclamation mark title or exclamation content then we'll set the error to title and content are required and then we can just return so now if we go back and if i reload this page let's click on create post and now we can see it says title and content are required right now let's go back and here after this let's go ahead and create a try catch block and in here we will make a fetch call to the API posts route. So let's tap const res equals await fetch and let's tap API forward slash posts. And let's go ahead and change this function to an async function because we are using await. So here let's type async. And now we need to use the post method over here because we are creating some data. So here let's add an object and here let's type method let's set it to post and uh, then we need to have headers and uh, we will set it to an object and here let's tap content type and uh, let's set it to application json and uh, then we need to have the body so let's type body and we need to convert it to json so let's type json dot stringify and uh, here let's pass all the data that we need so we need to send the title the content, the selected category, the links, image URL and public ID. So here let's type title, content, links, selected category, image URL and public ID. And here let's go ahead and check if the result is OK. So let's type if rest.ok. Then we'll just go ahead and redirect to dashboard. And here in the catch, let's go ahead and console.log the error. So here for redirecting, let's go ahead and import use router. So here let's type import use router from next navigation. And uh, here let's type const router equals use router. And now let's go ahead and uh, use it over here. So let's type router.push dashboard. And now we can go ahead and delete this import from here for the categories data that we had earlier. But now let's see whether this works. So let's go back to our website and let's reload this page. And here let's add some title. So I'll just type next.js. And here let's type create awesome websites with next.js. And uh, here let's add some links. So I'll just type http google.com. And uh, let's add one more link. Let's type HTTPS YouTube.com and let's click on add and let's select a category and let's select web dev. And now let's click on create post and let's see whether we are redirected to 
the dashboard and here we can say we are redirected to the dashboard and uh, let's go to Prisma Studio and let's go over here to posts and here we can say we have a new post next years create awesome websites with next years and we have the category set to web dev and the user is set to gtcoding0 at gmail.com so the create post functionality is working all right now let's go back to the api route so here in this api route we can see that we are setting the author email as a constant value over here so let's change this to the value from the session so here instead of adding the value directly over here let's go ahead and type session which we are getting over here and in that we have user and that we will have the email and let's get it as string so now the correct author email will be added to the database so let's go ahead and test it out so right now the email id is set to gtcoding0 at gmail.com so let's sign out and let's log in with the other account so let's click on sign out so let's sign in with github and now we can see we are signed in with this email id tutorial at gtcoding.net so now let's create a new post and let's add some content so here i'll just type javascript and here let's type javascript is awesome and uh, let's leave the link blank and let's select a category and let's select programming and now let's click on create post and now we can see we are redirected back to the dashboard and if you go to the prisma studio and if i reload this page we can see we have the third post and uh, for the user it is set to tutorial at gtcoding.net because we are logged in with that user so everything is working all right so here we can see that the user is being selected right now the last thing we will do is display the posts over here from the database so right now this data is coming from data.js file so let's go to the main page which is the page.dsx file and here we can see that we are getting the data from at data post data so let's remove this and now let's go ahead and get the posts from the database so let's go ahead and type const and let's call it posts equals await and we'll create a function called get posts and uh, let's change these names to posts and now let's go ahead and change this function to an async function and now let's create this get post method so let's type const get posts and it is going to be an async function and here let's add a try catch block and uh, here let's type const res equals await fetch and uh, here we need to make a fetch call to this api route which is api forward slash posts here we can see all the posts are being displayed so we need to copy this so let's copy it and let's paste it over here now here instead of this home page we need to replace this with the environment variable so here let's type dollar symbol curly braces process dot env dot next auth url and then let's type if res dot ok const posts equals await res dot json and let's return posts and he will also add one more option which is cache and let's set the cache to no store so that it will not cache the data so we will get the updated data right now just like we did for the categories let's create a type for this post so let's go over here to types index.ts and let's create a type for the posts so let's type export type t post and for the post we need to have an id it's going to be a string and then we need to have a title it is going to be a string as well and then we need to have a content it is going to be a string and then we need to have the image url and it is optional so let's type question mark and it is also a string and then we need to have public id and it is a string and then we need to have cat name and it is also optional let's type string then we have the links and uh, it is gonna be null or an array of strings and then we have created at and uh, it is gonna be a string and then we have the author email and it is gonna be a string as well and then lastly we need to have the author name as well now if you go back to our api here we can see that the author name is inside the author in that we have the name so let's add that type over here let's tap author and in that we have the name and it is going to be a string right now let's go ahead and use this type so let's go to page.tsx file and here 
let's set the return type to promise t post and let's import it from types and it will be an array or it will be null right now let's go ahead and uh, set the console log of the catch to error and uh, here lastly we will return null if anything goes wrong right now here we have some errors so for the author we need to type post dot author dot name and then for the author email let's type post dot author email and then for the date let's type post dot created at and then for the thumbnail let's type post dot image url and then for the category let's type post dot cat name and that should solve the problems so let's go ahead and save this and let's go back to our website and let's go to the home page and now we can see that the posts are being displayed over here we have the title and the content we also have the category displayed over here now since we don't have any thumbnail we are getting this placeholder thumbnail displayed over here and here we have the previous post and we also have the links displayed over here so everything is working all right now the last thing we will do in this video is we will display these edit and delete options only when the user is logged in and the post is written by them so for that let's go back over here and in this page.tsx file we are passing the author email so we are getting the author email from the database and we are passing it over here as a prop so let's go to the post component and here we can see we are getting the author email so here let's go ahead and get the session details so let's import get server session from next auth next and let's import auth options from this route and let's scroll down and here before setting the is editable constant let's tap const session equals await get server session auth options and we need to change this into an async function and here for editable let's tap const editable equals session ampersand ampersand so first of all we need to check whether we have a session and if we have a session then we need to check whether the email id of the session matches with this email id so let's tap session dot user dot email equals author email and if it is true then the is editable constant will be set to true or else it will be set to false and uh, here we are adding the condition so if it is editable then we will display this delete and edit buttons so let's go back and here we can see we have the edit and delete buttons let's scroll down and here we don't have the edit and delete buttons because this post was not written by us and now let's log out and for these two other posts we should have the edit and delete buttons because they are by the other user so let's log out and here we can see when we log out we don't have the edit and delete buttons for any of these posts so let's log in with our google account and let's go to the home page and now we can see for this first post we don't have the edit and delete buttons but if we scroll down for the second one we have the edit and delete buttons and even for the third one we have edit and delete buttons right now let's fix an issue that we have over here so we don't have the date displayed over here so here we can see that we are getting the date over here and we are adding that over here so let's go to the page.tsx file and here we are setting the date to create at we need to change this to created at so we need to change it over here in the types as well so here we need to change this to created at let's do the same over here created at and now let's save this and let's go back and now we can see that the date is being displayed over here now let's also display the date in a better format so let's go to the post component and here let's type const date object and let's create an object so let's type new date and let's create the date from the date that we get from the database so here let's tap const options and for the type i'll just type intl dot date time format options and uh, let's create this object so let's tap month and the month should be set to short and then we have day and it'll be set to numeric and then we have the year so it'll be set to numeric as well and now let's go ahead and create a const called formatted date and let's set it equal to date object dot to local date string and here let's type en us and let's pass the options over here and here instead of date let's add formatted date and now let's go back 
And here we can see that the date is displayed in a better format. Right, so that's basically it for this video. In the next video, we will continue creating our app. So if you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.